Hi, I'm Al Sutherland and I'm here today to talk about the Mesonet and also to talk about the new Botanic Garden at OSU site that we have that will be a teaching site both for visitors to the Botanic Garden and the students here at Oklahoma State University. The Oklahoma Mesonet is 120 sites across the state. Data comes in off that weather network every five minutes and you can look at that information online either at mesonet.org or we have apps that are available as well. All of that uh, free and readily accessed by anybody in the state. What we're doing here with the teaching site is we're providing a way for people to come out and actually look at a site look at the instrumentation on the site and get an idea of the kind of instruments that we use to collect the data for the different weather variables. Up at the top uh, we start out with a wind sensor uh, that can do both wind speed and wind direction. The other sensor up high is an air temperature sensor and that allows us to check both the upper and then air temperature down at uh, head height. That way we can tell if there's any inversions, which is very common in the winter. Inversions are important to know about because they can actually trap pesticide uh, residue and, and move those to sensitive areas. And then we have a relative humidity sensor, uh, and that's used to calculate dew point temperature and really gives us a good idea of the kind of moisture that's out there. That moisture we've had a lot of this year and that's really contributed to our disease problems. Uh, we have a wind anemometer. Um, this one would be at two meters or at six feet. Uh, and we use that for evapotranspiration on our irrigation uh, products. And then over here we have a pyranometer. Uh, that's really monitoring the uh, solar radiation. And again, we use that uh, for the evapotranspiration, the irrigation uh, models. We also use it for things like cattle comfort for livestock and now we even have a wet bulb globe temperature map and we're using uh, the sunlight levels in there to give humans a better idea of the kind of heat stress that they're facing. One of the unique sensors that the Oklahoma Mesonet has is soil moisture. And right here, uh, we see this little tuft of grass. We're actually trying to grow this over the top of the sensors so that the four sensors that we have are under sod. So we want to measure soil temperature and the soil moisture under sod. We're measuring that at 2 inches, 4 inches, 10 inches, and down at 24 inches. It's really nice that one sensor can do both measurements, both the soil moisture and the temperature. And then over uh, across from this plot, we have a bare plot, and that bare plot uh, will let us see the temperature and the soil moisture under bare conditions. That's really helpful from a gardening standpoint because you can monitor that bare soil when you can get your seeds to really sprout well. Farmers, of course, use it uh, for planting fields. Over here we have our rain gauge and one of the things that Mesonet has just done this year is put a double rain gauge at every Mesonet site across the system. You can imagine in a drought situation these are mechanical gauges uh, that actually tip back and forth and if a station sits idle or a rain gauge I should say sits idle for three months Spiders can get in there, dust and, uh, and other debris. So it really gives us a better level of accuracy to have two gauges. It's unlikely both of them would not work at the same time. And then the skirting that's around here is to change the airflow because when you set up a round circular object, you get wind turbulence around that and that can change the amount of rain that that bucket collects. Well, these little skirts, they don't stop the wind, but what they do is they change how that turbulence occurs and it, it helps get a more accurate rainfall reading. Well, how is all this powered? Some people think that we have electricity going out to all of our sites. And of course, here in the Botanic Garden, we could, but actually this site is just like our ones across the state. 
It's powered by solar panels, which go into batteries that are in a box. The batteries in this storage box have enough power that they can actually power the data logger for a full month, even under low cloud situations, which is something that we can see here in Oklahoma with either low clouds or fog. There's not enough power to go into the solar panel to charge the batteries. So we use that juice. Typically, it's not gonna last more than a couple weeks and then that solar energy will again start powering the batteries. That power is fed into the data logger that we have in this box here. And uh, that data logger uh, monitors conditions uh, across the site, collecting all of the data. Uh, some of the instruments report in terms of seconds, uh, and then that uh, data is averaged and then sent out every five minutes. So in terms of what we see uh, on the mesonet, data across the system, uh, it's really that five minute data. And it's also the five minute data that we store and for those kind of stations that have gone back to the beginning of the mesonet, January 1st, 1994, we now have over 20 years of five minute increment data off the system. So we're collecting all of this weather data. Why is that important? If it just goes onto a computer and sits there and nobody looks at it, it really doesn't have much value. But one of the things in the vision of the folks who put together the Mesonet, who founded it, they really looked at a service role. And so what they did was, very early on, they created a outreach for emergency managers across the state, which is public safety. That training not only includes emergency managers, but also police and fire professionals, as well as volunteers. Then we have a fire management section, which is OK Fire, and that's used for both wildfire control and for prescribed burning. So those professionals have a tool. Educators have uh, different products that they can access on the Mesonet as well. K through 12 is, is a big outreach. Of course, the universities are involved and a number of students uh, both undergraduate and graduate students have used the Mesonet data in their research. Hundreds of papers have been written out of that research uh, that's gone out. And then, of course, agriculture. Uh, that's what I'm involved with. And that serves farmers and ranchers, but it also serves you, gardeners. And it helps to provide the kind of information that you need. Rainfall information, wind, soil temperature, soil moisture, all the things that can be used to make a decision each day. In fact, one of the things I do on a weekend before I even go outside is pull up the app and take a look at it to find out what I'm gonna be faced with that day. And if I wanna know about wind, whether it's coming up or going down, I actually have a mediogram that I can go to very quickly on my app and take a look at that and see what conditions have been like for the last 24 hours. So there's a lot of uses. Virtually anybody that goes outdoors can use the Mesonet data to help them have a better uh, time outdoors and also to make their work more efficient. So virtually anybody who goes outdoors can use the Mesonet weather information. It helps them make better decisions. It helps them get more out of the time that they're outside. Helps them schedule what kind of activities they want to do to prepare for uh, those activities if they're going to be outdoors. What kind of clothing should they wear? Um, the winds are important for knowing when things drift. Uh, when should they spray? When should they not spray? When should they water? When should they not water? So it really can make a difference in how we use things in the yard, on the ranch, and on the farm. And all that comes from 120 stations across the state, data coming in every five minutes that creates a new weather picture for any of the weather variables that the Mesonet monitors. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.